Hi guys! Hi guys, today I thought I'd do a video on Nagia XI, the latest version. So if you don't know what Nagia XI is, it is really the industry standard in network monitoring solutions. I have been using this product for well over 10 years now, and it's really a great product. Anything you need to monitor in your data center infrastructure, you can monitor with Nagia XI. It's extremely powerful, and it has a huge library of plugins that's already been written out. So anything you can imagine you want to monitor, your Amazon Web Services Cloud, your ESXi VMware uh, Private Cloud, your WordPress instances, your web servers, your anything, your database servers, anything you know you want to monitor, you can start monitoring with Nagios XI. So just keep watching. I'll show you how to set up a server and add in a client and how easy it is to get started. So the first thing I did was go ahead and I did a fresh installation of CentOS 7. This is the server edition. I installed the graphical user interface just so it's a little easier for you guys to see it. So the first thing I want to do is download the installer. Now I'm not going to download the Nagios core, which is the free version uh, where you have to compile it. So I'm doing, this is the Nagios XI, which is, has a lot more functionality and it's a lot easier of an installation. It's really, really fast and really simple. So I'm just going to show you how easy it is to get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is CD into the temp directory. So this is where I'm going to download the installer too. It's relatively fast download, it won't take long at all. So we're going to use a wget command. You can also go to the website and download the latest version as well. So I'll have this URL um, to the wget to download the latest version of Nagios XI in the comments below. But it's pretty much just assets.nagios slash downloads Nagios XI and then XI hyphen latest. So this will download the latest stable release, tarred and compressed. So I'll give you a little progress bar here, show you how quickly it downloads. Now once it's done downloading, we'll go ahead and decompress it um, and untar it in the temp folder. And then we're gonna run the installation. So really that's gonna take a few minutes. Unless you have anything missing, I have seen this installation fail, not very often, but every once in a while it will. And the it, it, nice thing about it is it will pick up where it left off. So if you're doing the installation and you have to go in and install a package that might be missing, then it will, you can go ahead and restart the installation and it'll start off right where it left off, which is actually really nice. And if you look at it through the installation, you can see the scripts that are running. So you kind of troubleshoot it that way. So it's kind of easy to troubleshoot if you're looking at the, the error messages. So just a little tip there, because I've done that in the past, when for whatever reason the server was missing a specific library or um, package that's looking for. So here we go, we downloaded our latest stable release. Now let's go ahead and untar it and uncompress it. So that's when you use the tar extract. Z, it's to uncompress. F, it shows the file listing. And then we give it the file name. Now, once it's done extracting your folder, you can do a CD into Nagios XI. And we're going to go ahead and run the full installer. So, dot slash, this means current working directory. Um, and we're going to do full install. So, that's a, um, a script that's in the folder that will start our installation and all the um, sub-installation scripts. So it's going to just prompt you here, letting you know if you agree to the installation. And it's going to go ahead and start installing all the necessary packages that it needs to do the installation. And if you kind of look here really closely, you kind of see the packages that it's installing. So if it fails, you can kind of see where it failed, if it does fail at all. But for the most part, I've seen this work most of the time without any sort of issues, which is really great. Now, once it's done, it provides you a um, website you can access. It's the local IP address and then slash Nagios XI. So it set up a web page. So this is how we're going to interact with our Nagios server. It's all a web interface. So it makes it really easy if you're new to this environment. So you go ahead and click on it. And click on this link if you have a graphical user interface desktop and install your desktop environment. Or you could just um, go to uh, another computer that has a browser, and you can go ahead and type in this address. Make sure the port is open. Port 80 is open, so you're able to access it from another host. But since I'm going to be doing it from this same host, I could just do it from this IP address or local host, and it'll come right up in my browser. 
The first thing that's going to happen when you go to the site, it's going to prompt you to do a uh, finish installation, and it's just a few settings. So it gives you the URL, the administrator's name, the administrator's email address. And you should really take note of the username and password. Make sure you record the password because you're going to be using it shortly to log into the web interface. So yeah, you notice the IP address is the IP address of the host you're logged into. If you have um, DNS set up, you'll see the fully qualified name name as well will work your administrator name. Of course, you change all this information to be customized to your environment. So I'm just going to go ahead and save that password to a text file on my local computer so I make sure I don't lose it so I don't have to do any sort of hacking later and to get back to my Nagios um, web interface. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy it and paste it into a local text file. Of course, you want to put it somewhere more secure um, but just for right now, I just want to make sure I don't lose it. Alright, so now if we go back to our site, we can go ahead and log in with our Nagios admin username and our the password we just entered. So it is prompting you saying it's not secure. You can go to HTTPS. Um, you will get a warning message about the certificates. You can set up the certificates. So um, if you get this warning, just click on advance and then you can add an exception because the self-sign certificate instead of a certificate from a secure um, certificate authority. So you will get a little warning message, but this connection is, is encrypted. So if you're worried about that password, you might want to just check out and make sure the port's open if you're doing this remotely for uh, 443, so secure web um, connection. So let's go ahead and get that password. Paste it right in there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and install. Agree to licensing. Click Submit. And now it's going to take you to the web interface. Now it gives you kind of a quick little tour here. So if you want to take a second, read about the primary panels, how to navigate. Um, so I usually do everything right here on the secondary navigation. Usually everything I need about host details, services, overview, service problems, will, I will find in the side panel here. Right when you set up Nagios XI server, you can see immediately that um, there is one server being monitored, and it will always be the server you set up Nagios XI server on. The server itself is monitoring itself, so if it detects a problem, it will actually notify you on there. When you first log in, it would put you automatically in the home dashboard. So you can go ahead and take a look at a quick overview of all your services, if they're up or down, your hosts, if they're up or down, and then right here it has quick access to uh, some learning information, but also the quick view, so that's where I usually look at, the tactical overview. There isn't that much information because it's really just a single host and nothing's down, no services are critical, so you're not going to see anything here. So you get a quick bird eye view. And then operation center. So I'm going to go ahead and add a host. I'm going to show you how to do that. And then you get a little bit more data at these each of these options. So quick, depending which you want you like to look at in your data center. I've seen operators in um, data centers that keep this open on a monitor or a series of monitors in their um, operations desk and then just notifying at any time it shows quickly that there is an issue something starts blinking red the operators don't have to be wait to be paged or called they kind of see these different dashboards or summaries or status updates
Now I'm going to go over to the Linux server or the client in this example that we want monitor. So we're going to download um, a plugin and we'll go ahead and put it in uh, the temp folder again. So it's the agent and it's the Linux um, NRPE agent. So I'll have this link also in the comments below. So you can go ahead and download the latest stable release of NRPE. So that's, I believe it's Nagios Remote Plugin Executor. That's what it stands for. So once it's done having the correct URL typed in, go ahead and enter. And we're going to go ahead and untar and uncompress what we just downloaded. So we're going to do tar minus xzb and the file name. Now we're going to cd into Linux and RPE. Again, here you'll find another full install. So again, this is going to do the full installation for you. So again, I've done this a number of times and it works great. So I very rarely have issues with this. So you do have to run this as root. So you could be logging as root or do a sudo which is really the recommended method, um, and assume root, and go ahead and run the installer. It's really quick to set up this plugin installer. At the end, it will prompt you for the correct server that's allowed to connect to the remote, uh, Nagios remote plugin executor to get information. So this is your Nagios server. So and we're gonna go ahead and put in the IP address. It could be also the fully qualified name name, recommended IP address though. Okay, once that's allowed, you want to make sure the port is open and I'll have the comments on the ports below that you need to open up. And once that's done, you can go back to your Nagio server and we're going to check out if our services have gone from pending to actually um, current status as good or warning depending on the load of the system that it's currently um, being monitored. So here we are on the server. We went back to the web interface and looked at our status. All green lights except for total process and yum updates. So we need to do some updates on our system. So it's letting us know, which is really great that that's actually there. It's letting us know to do our um, system updates. All right, so if you go back to the dashboard now, you can get a little bit more information. You see that two hosts are up. 22 services, but also says, now it shows you the warning. So the yum updates and the number of processes are ge generating warnings. So when you start doing some of the quick links here, different panels you could look at to get information. And again, if you're in operations or your system administrator, I kind of, you can leave this browser window open and just have it running somewhere in your office. So if you could just see it right away, if something turned red. So lots of views you can choose from here, lots and lots of views depending on what kind of um, information you want to collect. So again, it has some nice views here for data centers. So this is something I've seen in data centers being used, BB Maps. So this quickly shows you which service is down or having issues or warning or critical. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. Be sure you're monitoring your infrastructure today. So important. You don't want to be the last person to know if there's a server issue. So subscribe to get updates, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.